Fox News alert now on the housing crisis. Brand new data out today showing home prices are falling big time across America's largest cities. Still, eight major markets, including Atlanta and Las Vegas, just to name a couple, seeing their lowest levels since the housing bust. But remember when the Obama administration promised to help millions of Americans struggling to stay in their homes in Mr. Obama's past addresses to Congress. It will help millions of Americans who are struggling with declining home values. Americans who will now be able to take advantage of the lower interest rates that this plan has already helped to bring about. In fact, the average family who refinances today can save nearly $2,000 per year on their mortgage. The steps we took last year to shore up the housing market have allowed millions of Americans to take out new loans and save an average of $1,500 on mortgage payments. So clearly we are still hurting. So what, if anything, should the Obama administration do and what should we hear from the president on this tonight? Joining me now, Dolly Lentz, Vice President, uh, Vice Chairman, I should say, of Prudential Douglas Elliman, Ben Stein, economist and author of The Little Book of Bulletproof Investing, and Ben Ferguson, Icon Network radio talk show host. All right, panel, thanks so much for being here. So let me start with you, Ben Stein. Uh, what, if anything, should the president be doing about this? Well, I think he should be telling the banks to tem temper justice with mercy. We don't want the banks to give up the right of foreclosure because that destroys the whole basis of property law. But we want the banks to be reasonable. If a person wants to come in and try to modify his or her loan and can come up with a decent amount of money to keep paying the mortgage, at least to some extent, the bank should not just slap that person all around and kick him out or kick her out. The bank should show some restraint and some mercy. If the president could call together the head of the big banks, heads of the big banks, and say to them, look, when you're dealing with borrowers who are in trouble, if the borrowers can make a good faith effort to pay their mortgage, even if they can't pay every penny of it, don't sell the loan to some shark hedge funds. Give these people a break. Let them try to stay in their houses. As the foreclosures wind up hurting the market in general, so no one's really in favor of foreclosures. But on the other hand, Dolly, people also aren't really in favor of seeing the government bail out somebody who got into a mortgage that was too big for them uh, when they're taking on second jobs to maintain a mortgage that they feel is too big for them. Exactly. I, that can't continue. And then banks won't want to lend and will be in this revolving crisis forever. I mean, we have to clean up by foreclosing, obviously those that are legitimate, uh, foreclosing, getting the process going, putting that property on the market, selling it off, and moving on. And until we do that, we're never going to be What's the creative. main obstacle? As somebody who's, who's in the business, what mm -hmm. is still the main obstacle in terms of moving houses and getting prices up? The supply and demand imbalance, which is the biggest problem actually is a confidence. People don't have confidence in homes anymore. And if you don't have confidence, it's all about confidence in the future, in the future value of the home. And the supply and demand imbalance doesn't help confidence. Is obviously. it the supply is hurting or the demand is hurting? Both. So we people have don't want to put their houses on the market in this in this market. Well, plus and people don't want to buy and can't get loans from banks. Exactly, and, and the supply is further hurt by shadow inventory. I mean, all kinds of issues that are looming. You know, they're not out there yet, but they're looming and coming on soon. So while there's a state at 8.1 months of supply on the market, it's more like 16 or 18 months, and in some markets, it could be as much as four years of inventory wow. on the market. Wow. And Ben Ferguson, mm -hmm. you know, the question is, yeah. what should the president do about this? Because as we played in the introduction, well, I mean, he's already promised and actually delivered on quite a few props to the housing market, but it hasn't, it hasn't changed the situation much. Yeah, I mean, you look at this, the president is not going to be able to fix this problem. What he can do is one government program that I actually like that helped everybody, and that was home buyer tax credit. It worked. It mm -hmm. made people go out there and make a decision to buy a house. The problem is with banks that even want to work with people that are upside down their homes is you've got federal regulators that are regulating everything they can do. They can't come to the table and say, Bob and Mike bought a house for 100000 It's only worth eighty now. We're going to work with them. The regulators are saying, no, you got to be on paper the way we tell you to look, out, look at it on paper. So if the president can say, let banks start doing kind of what they need to do, which is work with these people and bring back that tax credit, I think it helps out everybody. I mean, I'm a, I'm a foreclosure guy. I bought a foreclosure. Thank goodness I did because I haven't seen my home price or anybody in the neighborhood go up in the last three and a half years. Well, and now, Ben Stein, some are pushing for the federal government to offer more in the way of guarantees uh, so that banks will feel more comfortable lending because they've got a backstop. They, you know, it basically removes the risk for them because the feds are saying, don't worry if she defaults, I'm going to take care of it. 
I think that's a good idea to guarantee a certain percentage of the loan. We obviously would want them to guarantee 100 percent of the loan because that really puts the government into the business of making home mortgages on a scale that I don't think we want in a free enterprise society. But the, what we see all around is people are forgetting a home is not really an investment that like a stock or a bond. It, it is for living in and for enjoying. And we, we get a certain amount of pleasure and, on our investment every day when we live in the house. But it, but it still tortures people to be under underwater on their mortgages. Let's tell the banks, come on, guys, show some reasonableness. Let's tell the regulators, as Ben Ferguson so rightly said, show some decency, show some kindness. Let's let's be flexible about this. Let's not be like Simon Legree. Let's be flexible. I but didn't. I mean, I think, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Ben, I'll get to you in one second. But Dolly, this is for you. Maybe I'm wrong. But it isn't showing decency and kindness in part what got us into this mess because too many mortgages were given that, that should not have been given. Without a question, I, I think that decency and kindness has its place, but the place now is to clean up the economy, clean up the housing mess, and move on so we can clean up the entire economy. How do you do that? Do you, do you sort of try to lubricate the wheels of spend of lending at the banks? Well, that's one way. She's tried to do that, President Obama has, and they haven't been giving the loans. That's one way. I mean, another way is to if he would tonight talk about the housing mess and talk about it, give a coherent plan to clean up the supply and demand imbalance, I really think he'd go a long way. And the plan doesn't have to be specific. These are my five points. The plan has to be, I'm going to look into this, we're going to review it. He's already said that. You know, Ben yeah. Ferguson, he said he's, he's going to look it into it year. for years. Hey, the, yeah, the, the, but there's a real question about whether any head of state, and never mind the Congress, can fix this problem. And, and they can't. You've got a bad economy right now, and you have unemployment around 10%. That's bad for housing. It's always going to be bad for housing. The one thing that worked was giving people the ability and an upside to go buy a house now so that they would focus on their finances, get their credit fixed, which is exactly what hundreds of thousands of Americans were trying to do with a home time, first time home buyer's tax credit or a buyer's credit in general. It's, it's smart money because it makes people say, you know what, I'm willing to be smart about this. I'm willing to go look at a house. I'm willing to clean up my credit life. And I'm not going to rent anymore, and that's good for the entire economy. Because when you buy a house, and Ben Stein has talked about this before, it, it, it stimulates the economy in all sectors. You buy appliances, yeah. you buy carpet, you get things redone, you do new tile work. I mean, it helps out all sectors of the economy, which makes everyone make more money. It's really that first-time housing credit expired at the end of April of 2010. That's over. But right now, yeah. according to uh, S&P and Kay Schiller, the November 2010 home prices are down by 30 percent, more than 30 percent. 30 percent, but to over the last 10 years, last word, over the last 10 or 20 years, it's been a phenomenally great investment. I mean, let's not forget how it was artificially over great. It was is, artificially no, great. No, That's right. No, That's no, right. it was a phenomenally great investment <laughs> for the entire post-war period. Yeah, but period. it's past. Don't stop rubbing it in for no, those of us who didn't no, get it. it. How no, about letting no, people take money out of their retirement oh, accounts tax-free and penalty-free? and buy a home, a second home, and maybe that will stimulate oh. purchasing. And President Obama, are you listening? <laughs> this is a, a new idea that could work. All right, I gotta go, panel, they're yelling at me now. Dolly, Sorry. Ben and Ben, thank you both.